Hello and welcome to summer 2023. And you chose to take time this summer to learn more about developmental psych. And I am very happy to see that. This is awesome. Great way to spend the summer. However, I do hope that you get to the beach and enjoy what we call the main summer. So off we go and welcome to class. I will be, uh, my name is Mark Kavanaugh and I am your instructor for this uh, summer and the way I run my online classes is I do one of these videos each week try to get it posted pretty early on Monday and I use these videos to talk a little bit about what's expected for the week in this case we're going to be doing a little bit of a review of our bright space environment in which we are going to be working together and so you know what it's co what's coming up. So everything is reflected, of course, on the course timeline and the documents that are available to you. But this would be a little video, a little bit of teaching. It doesn't, I'm not gonna be doing lectures, although I may talk about some of the course content itself. I leave that for the course book and the videos that are in the course book. So without further ado, we're gonna switch over to Brightspace here and let's take a look at our class. This is uh, the OLA, one, my apologies to the OLC students. I'm teaching two sections of this class this summer, and, uh, but your class looks exactly the same. So as you enter into the class, this is what you're seeing, and this is where your, uh, the video is gonna be posted when I've completed the video. And my classes are pretty straightforward in terms of navigation. We simply go over to where it says content, and this is just about everything you need to know. Now it opened up here to the course timeline, but I'm going to skip over here to the course overview and the syllabus. And you have some information here about the beginning and start dates of the class. There's a little video about navigating the course, kind of what I'm doing right now with a little bit more details. But down here, right here, this is, this is where the content is. A lot of online classes actually write the content right into the learning management system like Brightspace. I publish a book and the book is separate from the course itself. So you have to go to this section and you have a number of options here. For my course book right here, you can download a free PDF. If you have an iOS device or a Mac, you can buy an Apple Books version I think they're like $4.99, and they're also available in print directly from Amazon or through the campus store. This course book is a document that contains my content, introduction to the chapter, that whole, and a description of every assignment, every discussion, every quiz, and every assignment. All of those things are described in the course book. So you're gonna, you're gonna go in here and you're gonna see an assignment, but there's nothing there because the description is in the course book. So you're always reading the course book and then going into Brightspace to submit your work. In addition to the course book, there's also a textbook. Now I'm gonna be pretty honest. A lot of people don't read the textbook and they still do fine, but if you're energetic and you really want to know even more about lifespan development, then I would certainly encourage you to read this book. This is a, a free download. It's a free book. And it gives you a lot more breadth. My content goes deep into areas that I find interesting and I've found useful for my students to know. The book goes into other areas that I don't cover, other areas that might be of interest to you that expand your knowledge. Please take this opportunity to willfully engage in all of the material, even though I'm only requiring that you use my course book. The two are aligned, chapter to chapter. So chapter one in my course book refers to chapter one in the textbook. So they just make their way together kind of a unified thing. I based the course book on the textbook, drawing material from the textbook, then also adding my own material that's in there. So please take advantage of both of those. So let's take a look as, as you scroll down here, there's my email, there's some, some uh, support websites. Here's the instructional hierarchy here. And then we come down to the syllabus. You can print this off or not. You can see we're gonna be going through 10 chapters across the lifespan. 
me read all this information, but let's get down to grading here. Right, this section, the discussions, the online discussions are worth 25% of your grade. The chapter quizzes that are described in the course book are 25%, and the chapter assignments collectively are 25%. Then we have this thing called the special assignments. Together, they're all worth 25%, but I break them down here. There's four special assignments. One is called the cultural dimensions of childbirth. One is identity status. There's the biography and the reflection on the biography. And you'll see that there were 10, 10, 50, and 30% respectively. The biography is a big deal. If you've been around KVCC and you've been anticipating this class or talking with anybody who has been taking this class, this has been an assignment in my course since the beginning, since 1997. I had had this in my class. Very important, <clears throat> excuse me, very important um, part of this class, the biography. Now, now notwithstanding everything that I'm going to say is described in the course book. If you go to the back of the course book, there's a section for each one of these special assignments with in-depth descriptions and expectations and the grading rubrics and everything. They're all in the course book, but I'm just giving you a heads up. The biography entails you finding a person 65 years or older. If you can't do that, you have to get permission from me regarding that individual. But the point is to get somebody who's later in life and write their life story. That is not an academic paper. It is a biography. So to meet with that person, get them to tell their stories, put it into a timeline, you know, as a narrative, just like as if you would buy a book about somebody's biography, you know, Samantha was born on a dark stormy night on July 5th, 1949. You know, that's how it's, that's you're telling the story from your perspective that sits as an assignment right there. And then there's another assignment where I'm having you reflect upon that experience and apply course concepts to the stories that you uh, collected from this individual. This is a project that does not tolerate procrastination. It does not. So it's time to leave those habits aside get started on this thing, reach out, find the individual. I actually have you do a little quiz telling me, it's, a, it's your biography proposal, telling me who you're going to be interviewing and your relationship with them. It can be a relative, it can be a friend, it can be a friend of a friend, it could be somebody's grandfather, somebody's grandmother. I've even had some individuals who got permission to interview someone at a nursing home or it doesn't matter. As long as it's the person, you're going to capture their life. This is an incredibly, um, how can I say it, important opportunity for you to enjoy what we can learn from people in late life. Uh, it is an honor for us to be able to have someone willing to tell us their story. And it's important that they understand that we're going to be asking them to tell their story. They, of course, can edit that story. They don't have to tell you everything. But if you encounter someone and they say, I don't want to talk about my childhood, that was, that's not the person. I'm sure they have a great story, but it's not for this assignment. Make sure you find someone who's like, yep, yeah, I'm willing to tell you just about everything. Won't tell you everything, of course, but you know, someone who's willing to tell those stories. You can also collect pictures, items that, you know, as long, you know, take pictures of things and put them in the, to, to supplement the story itself. And in the end, you're going to be giving that back to the individual as a gift uh, for the gift that they gave you of telling you their life story. So that's an assignment due at the end of the semester, but get started on it now. This week, however, we are going to be looking at chapter one, and this is the study, I'm sorry, looking at the wrong one, introduction to lifespan development. <clears throat> I introduce 
two very important components of how we understand human development, how we describe it. One is the developmental clocks. So we have the historical clock, social clock, psychological clock, and the biological clock. In the discussion, what I'm asking you to do is to share a personal story of when your clocks were off or an interesting story about one of your clocks. Let's say, say for example, one of my his, history, uh, one of my uh, historical clock things is I was raised in the time when you went out to buy music, you got them on vinyl records. Now that's coming back. So it's, you know, so vinyl records are coming back. It's like, well, yeah, that's what we used to have. I still have a, a, in my office here. I have a whole collection of records and the turntable and everything. And, um, and it's an interesting thing to see come back, you know, having that, having lived in that period of time and how it's affected my perception of music and whatnot. Don't worry about what I'm, you're going to learn about this when you read about the developmental clocks in the course book. But I'm asking you to give an example and share stories with each other about your particular developmental clocks. And sometimes, like say, maybe the historical clock makes it makes it difficult for you to deal with something that's going on now in terms of society. Or, you know, maybe there's a social clock and your psychological clock wasn't ready. The social clock said get married and start having kids, but the psychological clock wasn't quite ready to do that yet. Those kinds of stories are what make exploring this particular topic really interesting. So you'd be sharing those stories. Again, the, the way we do discussions is the expectation is you're going to be doing a main post answering my prompt that exists within the course book. And you're going to be reading others' posts and you're going to be replying to at least two of them. That's how I'm going to grade. There's hardly any sort of qualitative component. I'm not going to be asking for word counts, not necessarily going to be asking you to put references in there. You can certainly do that. I want a conversation. I want to see you interacting with each other. I'm going to go in every once in a while, maybe play devil's advocate or something like that, or push things in the right direction if they're going astray. It's a polite environment. Make sure that you are very uh, aware of individuals' perspectives on things. This is a place to share, compare, and be aware. I just made that up. Share, compare, and be aware. That's the right. Maybe that's a useful thing. So, you're going to be going into those discussions and sharing about your developmental clocks. So, I'm looking forward to see how we can engage that. Now, in the quiz... I'm asking you to engage in what is actually a very, very simple task, but tends to run people wrong because they're not expecting it to be so easy. And that is constructing a question in, from the developmental perspective. I introduced the developmental perspective as a fundamental aspect of thinking that you gain from taking this class. And that is when we are exploring any aspect of the human experience, it is often useful for us to ask how old the person was when that happened. So we have normal developmental clocks that are going on and then things happen. Let's say a person is in an auto accident and they are now using a wheelchair to get around. And we might say, well, how does that, how does that accident affect that person? That's a great psychological question. That'd be the answer to question one in our quiz. How does getting into an accident resulting in paraplegia, just, there's just the legs, affect this person? And then in the second question, I want you to take the same phrase and I want you to add age. That's it. How does get into an accident and become a paraplegic affect a five-year-old? That's the answer to number two. You could also write, how does it affect a 25-year-old? I'm not looking for you to answer the question. I'm not looking for you to do some sort of comparison. The first answer should almost look exactly like the second answer, except the second answer includes an age. Pick an age. doesn't matter which age. What this does is it tells you that when things occur, when they occur is important. That's it. 
when something occurs, such as this accident, let's say we're looking at a 15-year-old. A 15-year-old gets into a car accident and now they're rolling to get around. How does that affect a 15-year-old? Once you study developmental psych, you understand all the sort of typical things going on with the 15-year-old. There's a lot of identity development. There's relationship development. There's you know, develop a continuing development of what they're good at, career aspirations. There's a lot going on at 15. Peer relationships, maybe it's the early romantic relationships, all of those. So there could be some very significant impacts, potentially from that person now having to use a wheelchair. That said, if we look then at a 40-year-old, what does that affect? You know, maybe they're already married and they're all have family and stuff like that, but their career might have just got side railed. You know, that kind of thing. We have to look at what's typically going on. We're not going to do that in the quiz. That's the that's the result of taking the developmental perspective. This quiz is easy smeezy. One question without age, one question with age. That's it. They should look almost identical. Now, that doesn't just give you the answer on a silver platter. I don't know what else does. So that's our week one, chapter one, getting familiar with the uh, interface here and getting started on that biography, finding that individual. Maybe you've anticipated this. Maybe you knew this was coming. Maybe you already have that person going. Maybe you've already started interviewing them. That would be awesome. Get that interview done. Get that those kinds of things. You can actually just start going. Submit them whenever you're ready. There's a couple other assignments. There's the uh, the cultural aspects of childbirth, and then there's a big kind of identity assignment where I'm asking you to look at a whole bunch of aspects to just to describe who you are. This is a really uh, neat assignment to do that. So that's our first week. I'm looking forward to the discussions because it's kind of fun to talk about our different clocks. I'll be sharing some of mine, exemplifying how to do this. Um, I am available by email. I can have Zoom meetings with you. I can meet you face to face. I'm still around. I'm not traveling the world. I'm not in Portugal or anything to be nice, but I'm not. And uh, so just reach out if there's any questions post questions in the, uh, I have a questions, you know, course questions discussion board. I also have a course lounge if you want to, you know, organize a beach trip or something with your friends, uh, whatever. This is a social class as well. So I look forward to the discussions and to getting to know you over this uh, semester in both of these classes. Um, PSY 215 OLA and OLB. Lots of you learning about human development this summer. So be well, get outside. It's really nice. The graphics are amazing. And it is, uh, it's really sunny today. So I'm going to be spending some time outside for sure. And be well, and I will see you next time.